Hey guys, welcome back. So now we're going to start this next unit where we talk about higher order differential equations. And so the one higher than first order is naturally second order. So I'm going to do some quick introductions on definitions and examples and do a quick derivation of the classic mass oscillator uh, that virtually every professor that I've taught for has tested in some way. So we'll go through the full, full derivation. We won't do any solving uh, for now, just kind of getting theory and um, examples and intuitions uh, kind of down on the on the board and then in later sections we'll start doing these problems so first thing second order just a quick refresher that just means that there's gonna be a second derivative in the equation so something like this uh, y double prime plus PT y prime plus QT y is equal to G of T that is a second order linear um, and if g of t is equal to zero for all t, then homogeneous ordinary differential equation. If it's not equal to zero for all of t, then this is just second order and linear. So it kind of carries over. So if you if you got a good handle on first order things, much of what you learned is gonna serve you well in this unit. Then we're gonna focus in on another type of equation called the second order linear constant coefficient ODE. And that's just written as follows as a y prime prime plus b y prime plus c y is equal to g of t. And a, b, and c all have to be real numbers. And just keep in mind that this a cannot equal zero because then this would vanish and then we would be stuck in first order. So just keep that in mind. Great. Now we're going to derive how you get to the mass spring oscillator. And this is going to rely on some physics, so hopefully you've, you're either in physics one right now, or, you're, or you've taken some physics in high school, or whatever it may be, but just kind of try to follow along, and hopefully this all makes sense. Cool, so the scenario that we want to worry about here is there's like a ceiling, and then coming off of the ceiling is the spring, and then the spring is attached to some mass of interest. And then this mass, I believe this is the the symbol for dash pot, which is going to serve as our damper. And then this is attached to perhaps like the floor. So we want to model how this mass is going to move with respect to time. Um, and so remember the spring has a characteristic called the spring constant. This uh, damper or dash pot, whatever they, you want to call it, is going to have something called gamma associated with it, and then the mass is just its mass, right? So, let's get some things straightened out. We're going to denote this going down as the positive direction. So remember, in physics you can do this. You can just denote which way is positive, which way is negative, when you're trying to do Newton's second law. Um, and so, classically, it's you take it to be down as positive. Might be counterintuitive, but you'll see why in a second. Then, because of the spring, we have a spring force acting up, right? So we'll denote that as Fs. And then this damper, because it's kind of going away from the mass as well, is also acting up. So we'll call this F. Uh, do I use D? I'd use D. F for damping. D damping. Cool. So remember. Newton's second law, or if I'm, if you're just now seeing this now, then this is Newton's second law. Um, the sum of all forces, and this and in this case it's only the y direction, so it is the sum of all forces, is going to be equal to mass times acceleration, right? And as far as I can tell here, uh, there's only the spring force and the damping force. There is also the gravitational force, but I'm going to neglect that for now, and you'll see why at the end of the derivation. And this is equal to, if we took down to be our positive direction, then this is minus Fd minus Fs. Right? Cool. So, after this, I should probably tell you how Fd and Fs are characterized, right? So, Fd, which is the force due to the dampener, is just that gamma times the velocity of whatever is happening. Okay? And then if you remember from Hooke's law, Fs is just k times the position, which we're going to be using uh, y, so I should make this a y. 
in intro level courses it's usually x because we deal with the horizontal but now because it's in vertical i'm going to use y same thing so you might be thinking like okay how the hell do i make an od out of this like what's the point right i didn't sign up for physics um well you can so let's quickly review some things from physics in addition to this right so acceleration is really just the derivative of velocity right would and the derivative of velocity is just or the derivative of acceleration like the derivative again of velocity is going to equal to the double derivative of position right okay that's good and then velocity is just the derivative of position and then position is just position right so let's take everything that we have here really um, there's no point in me circling everything so I'll just move down hopefully you've written this down so that what I had was MA is equal to minus FD minus FS right okay now let's substitute everything so that it's in terms of position so this will become MA is just going to be M d squared y dt squared and then minus fd is going to become minus gamma and then times dy dt and minus fs is going to become minus k y right now put this all on the same on the same side of the equation you'll get m d squared y dt squared plus gamma dy dt plus ky is equal to zero. Assuming there's no forcing, which there is in this case. So the right hand side can be other things, assuming that if you if you're pushing or pulling this mass and uh, that can be modeled by a function, but here we're not doing that. It's just solely being operated by the dash pod and the spring. So and then I'll make a quick note for people that might be yelling at me that oh I didn't take care of gravity. Um, so the force of gravity is taken care of by how much the mass stretches through the spring. And the book goes into a little bit more detail of it, but this I just wanted this to be a quick derivation. Again, you should be using these videos like in, in addition to going to lecture, recitation, reading the book. Um, so if you want to see why exactly that is, you can see it. Basically, they, they equate to that distance that the um, spring goes down to the force of gravity, which is uh, totally doable and allowable by physics. So just know that F, the force of gravity is taken care of by how much the mass stretches um, due to the spring. Great. Now, because we're starting out and you have no idea how to solve this yet, we are just going to try to find the equation and this is how the problems are going to be posed to you. So I'll just read this aloud real quick. A mass weighing two pounds stretches a spring six inches. The mass is then pulled down an additional three inches and released. Assuming there's no damping, find the initial value problem that models the scenario. Great, okay. So key to uh, word problems is just pulling out everything that you need. So keep in mind, all we're trying to do is find something that will look like this, right? Our mass oscillator question. So it'd be good if we found m, if we found gamma, and if we found k. And then I said IVP, right? So we also want to know y at uh, some time t0 is going to equal to some initial position and then y prime, which is the velocity at some initial time, is going to equal to some uh, initial velocity, right? So, okay, so we want to find that. First things first, let's try to find m. So, if we want to find our mass, be careful. Um, I personally like metric units a lot more, and my background in double E has never really led me to use pounds or inches, at least thus far. Uh, but I know a lot of mechanical engineers and other majors 
have to use these units, American units. So I'll just make this quick aside. When they say weighing two pounds, that means the force of gravity. So that means the total weight. That doesn't mean the mass is two pounds. So you have to set two pounds is equal to m times g, right? And so two, and then if you remember, g is 32 feet per second squared in the uh, American unit. So m times 32. And then so m is going to equal to 1 16th. And if you want units, this is pound per second squared, right, per feet. Good, but it doesn't really matter. You can just find m to be 1 16th. Uh, it says no damping, right? Right here, it says no damping. So that means that gamma is equal to 0. Good. Then we want to find k, right? So k might be a little tricky at first to really think about how to find, but it's not too bad. If you go back to fs is equal to ky, we need to find a force and some position, right, of interest in order to find k. So remember that weight when I when I did that uh, uh when I told you that the force of gravity is taken care of by how much the mass stretches, this is where you equate it. So this fs is really the weight of this uh, this mass. So that that was said to be two pounds is equal to k. And then in the problem, it stated that it stretches a spring six inches. So in order to keep units the same, we have to divide this by 12 inches in order to get feet. Therefore, our k is four, right? And if you want units, pound per foot. But again, not necessary. Great, so at least we can write our ODE at this point. Right, we have everything. So our ODE is now 1 16th y prime prime plus 4y is equal to 0. Good. Now we want to find our IVP. Okay. So initial value problem. If you read that last sentence, it says mass is pulled an additional 3 inches. So mass is pulled an additional 3 inches is going to imply that we're really at time 0, we're starting 3 inches down, and remember down is positive, so that's 3 inches divided by 12 inches, that's going to give me 1 fourth. So this is our first initial condition, and then remember, because this is second order, we need two initial conditions. If it was third order, we need 3, if it was nth order, we need n. Okay, so we also care about the velocity. So, that one word, released, implies that it's released with no pushing or pulling, which means it's released with no velocity. So that means that time equals zero, the velocity is zero. So you can just write it like that. And there you go. These two together with this equation models that scenario that I stated with two sentences. So good. All right, In the next section, we're going to build up a little bit more theory. And then I believe the section after that, we're going to start doing some real problems. So I'll see you then.